And on start on the start of the app, did it notify the host that it needed to hot reload itself? Yes. Okay, so now let's say the app is running and I want to change something on it. Like let's change uh let's add an object to order. Or let's change database sources. In in this uh build in in a uh, where you have hot reload and I want to read what the code is that you execute for hot reload scripts hot mm -hmm. reload and it's literally do you just hit curl microlib reload and it hot reloads microlib which is yeah. the host that's and the host. it uses this outer depends on inner architecture so when we restart this we basically throw away this closure, but persist any data from it, open up a new closure, or essentially restart Webpack, which then goes out and refetches all the chunks. And that restart time is... So if we keep the... If you kept Lambda's warm, and you would avoid a thousand millisecond cold start, which means that a hot reload event would only take you, say, 200 milliseconds, depending on your HTTP source, if you had it, yeah, like... depending on how much... Yeah. Depending on and, how much you're keeping in cache and depending uh yeah on what uh CPU you have and how much memory. Um but it's significantly shorter. Yeah, significantly yeah. shorter. You're not downloading files and uh, and writing files out to disk and uh you know and restarting all kinds of processes. This is this is super fast, right? It's just one message to the host, which then you know internally yeah, which then just disposes of a closure and re restarts webpack. So all you're doing is paying for the webpack boot time. You're not paying for the cold start boot time. You're just paying to restart webpack. Yep. Which and, is and client connections will never go down, right? Client connections never go down. So uh, if you're doing down. single process, yep. If you're doing single process in cluster, it, with cluster we actually do a rolling restart, right? So how um, is it in single process the client never goes down? Because that seems. Or how sh show us the hot reload code, or that might be an Aegis, that might be for another time, but um, it's just amazing that, yeah, because I, I guess, yeah, the process is the client. So that's where the express server is running. And we just have a piece of middleware or a root to a piece of middleware that's microlibs or all of that. And we're saying all of that stays active, the only thing that we're going to do is we're just going to restart the start function of this thing and bust the cache on it. And whenever we get this update, deal yes. with some energy management and then just re-require this file. Yeah, and, and the re-require is made uh, simple by the fact that we're, we're, we're requiring our own remotes within uh, the host, which is uh, something that the uh, module federation allows you to do. Basically, that provides us with a with a nice closure, right? Closure that um, yeah, it really makes it easy to dispose of everything that we need to. And, and then the code streaming yeah. as well. We're literally tell telling Lambda, hey, go out over the network to your CDN or to your VPC or even to Redis if you want it, and read these files back down into memory and execute these modules and just like a browser pretty much we're able to fetch them without having them there and we don't need to kill the process because we don't have to update the file system that's right yeah we're not interested in the file system <laughs> the network's the file system right um you know GitHub. The, the is the initial file system and in this case we're using just straight from github like we're just pulling code from a github like in Wherever. Yep, but why not wait from GitHub? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. You could host it right on GitHub, and you know, if you wanted secure, well, I guess security would be. It's more about exposing source, but there's so many ways where you could. Well, you got you know, GitHub Enterprise, you know, data, um, yeah. or whatever. Are you using AWS's uh, code source, whatever, right? Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, whatever your pleasure. Um, but yeah, the I think showing this with GitHub. Um, it's a. And, it's like the three way. To, to show it off, where you have need this minimal infrastructure and literally having your hosting platform that your server reads from be your own GitHub repo, that's a pretty cool kind of concept where, like, it, you know, the remotes are fetched. Where it's oh, like, we're, we're all running one line of code. 
without writing one line of code. Um, raw GitHub content you know, and just get it right from the repo, and that's what you're reading and running. Zero configuration. Yeah, it's just it just works. Um, yeah, that's that is pretty exciting. You know, and um, you know, I think you asked to see uh, live replacement of a uh, of a storage adapter. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, that's pretty uh, slick too. <laughs> Tyson had showed me before, and like. I wanted to like let the audience see this because the hot reload is so subtle that you don't even like you wouldn't have noticed really that it happened. We hit restart and what we didn't we didn't restart microlib. We rebuilt microlib example, which is where all of our logic is. Microlib is like what is running Aegis and all of that. And the example is just a module that connects onto it. So re it's microlib example never runs really does it or it, the only thing that it runs is it runs like a network server for itself so that it you just can just reach out and read it you know off local it's, it's like acting using the file server basically yeah uh, and it's also it's also hosting my other you know test services right but it is it, it is as far as being remote it's 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 more than what it needs to be right um yeah I, i'm yeah, I'm just using it for for as a kind of a, a testing platform, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like a sophisticated example, but yeah, it's really cool to just understand that microlib example never runs. So when we go re reload or restart, all we're doing is telling this thing, "Hey, ping ping Aegis and let it know that I built new code and Aegis hot reloads." Yep. And, 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 and again, in reality, what, what would happen is, you know, you'd go and you'd commit that code, right? And at that yeah. point, the, the CICD um, pipeline would take over. Yeah. That would be what would, you know, uh, be responsible for the deployment. In this case, it's just uh, uh, for, for sake of example. We're, just, we're simulating the build and the ping command. But yeah, I get what you mean. Um, but yeah, like, so I think showing... So with that in mind, now we're going to swap out a database driver and we're going to say without turning off the server or the host, we're going to replace the remote's database. And we're going to tell this order service that we have running of this order system, we're going to go from, I think it was Mongo, and we're going to go to the file system store or one way or the other. But yeah, basically, right. yep. That's right. We're going to completely change and require a different file system um, oh, I killed by it. editing the files themselves, not by using a switch statement or sending a function that points it there, but by actually going in and just changing the text of what we're going to use, saving the code, and redeploying it. Absolutely. The host will pick it up. Yep. Uh, all right. So. Now let's just let's just check out orders and see what's in there. Okay. Um, so there's there's 1,200 orders, um, and uh, <clears throat> I, could, I can tell you that that's 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 Mongo that's backing that right now. Um, uh, but let's go change that. Yeah. So we're going to replace the database, and. If we hit the Mongo store, which I think is the one we have connected at the moment. Yep. So well, let's hit that in the browser and see how many data sources or like how many, what what's the count that we currently have? Yep. So let's look at order. Yeah. So order right now has this, this data source, uh, which is Mongo uh -huh. defined for it. Uh, and if we look on the server, uh, just microlib. So this is the the host that E just runs on. Yep. Uh, if we look here, I think what we have defined is the uh, uh, file. So that's just using the file system by default. If you don't specify anything, it'll just use file system by default. So, um, and I think I have it just going to dist so that it gets cleaned up when you rebuild. Um, so yeah, you can see the uh, products is out there. Yeah, um, well, we just and we just created product. Uh, oh, we created catalog. Yeah, but it had product on the uh, as the name. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> uh -huh. 
So, uh, so let's, so we, but that's all we've got out there right now. So let's go uh, to, to, um, back to example. So let's see. query it and let's see what's in the Mongo store before we right. change. Uh, so, oh, we're just restarting. Right. So, yeah. so let's, yeah, let's just clear this and let's just see what's, um, oh, I just created one. Um, Let's see what's in orders right now. All right. 1,276 so, orders Mongo database. Right. And All right. Now we are. All right. Yeah, this is microlib. So you want to go over to the, there we go. Microlib. I'm just going to comment this out, right? So now we've turned off the data source and now we're going to go start all so what does start all do uh, i'm just gonna i'm just gonna do a restart which is just going to um uh so i'm gonna just kill the app here okay uh not that doesn't really matter uh what 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 i'm doing yeah, like, what we're doing in the audience, here I, would be, so I, would, I would rebuild and retest right and then commit this code right and then it would yeah. go through the ci cd process and it, when it's time to deploy it would it would notify um the, the remote the remote uh to, and so to, we're just gonna okay so we just build yeah. build and notify the the host that's right okay so it's building and now, now it's up and uh you can see right here hot reload complete that was a note that it, uh that was a message it got from the host hot reload complete okay so just by bringing it up it completed its hot reload yep all right, and well, let's go. Uh, let's go query this thing. And uh, oh, none in there. Wow. So how many do I have now? One order. One. Yeah, total <laughs> one. Yep. So. To recap, uh, here. what we did was build these files, then so go yarn serve that disk file of the microlib example, and send off a curl request that says hot reload to where microlib is running, which is powered by Aegis. And that's where the hot reload happens, because that's the process everything is running through. And this is using basically like polylith architecture. Because the idea is that this runs on a lambda, so each lambda could technically run as the monolith, but it's distributed across multiple applications. Or multiple- yeah, Or like, uh, you might say it like, uh, you know, it's it's a mono, you, you go back to the monolith because you're consolidating, but the monolith is really made up of multiple, um, uh, uh, you know, components, which are the, which are the microservices, which are the application components, except now they're truly modular and independently deployable. Um, yeah. You didn't have before. And so you can see here that here's the order now that's being written out of the file system instead of the Mongo. That so is you, very cool. So you could do this, uh, you could, you could do this and like you just flush, uh, you know, the, this is like how you migrate your data if you wanted to. <laughs> Uh, you can send this stuff anywhere around, like to the to edge network or something, where uh, you know um, you have more traffic. So it's it's really flexible that way. Uh, everything's lightweight, um, and keeping it serializable that's um, that's the key.